welcome back to Try Lines TV. Today, we're going to be going through our second part with Jason Shortis, and he's going to talk a little bit more on strength specifically, and how that's going to affect triathletes, and some of the interesting things about resetting the body and then working forward to develop that strength. Now, here's Jason Shortis for part two. Um, so, I'm going to talk to you about strength, and strength and conditioning from, from a triathlon perspective, all right? Basically, I'm not going to talk about massive weights, I'm not going to talk about going to the gym, I'm talking about stuff you can actually do at home or you can do as an adjunct to your training. We're talking 30 to 45 minutes, once, twice, three times a week is what I'm going to be talking about. Now, from, from my perspective as from a rehab professional, what, what I see as being really, really, really important is actually, and I do it a slightly different way, I see it as strength is only part of it. I see it as being a releasing part, so there's a part where you actually release. So we as human beings learn how to move, right? From when you're a little kid crawling to when you, as you go up, you learn things as you go along. Your body adapts, you, you just adapt and do what you've got to do to get where you've got to be, right? That body's an amazing thing, which is why the training principle works and you give it stress, you recover, and the body makes itself strong and off you go. The same thing kind of works from a strength perspective as well. So we're going to talk about Basically, but the first part is to unlearn, there's certain motor patterns that you actually learn that actually aren't a good thing, right? There are certain habits that you form that just get you through, but if you learn a better way, you can actually, in a stronger and move in a certain way or switch on certain groups of muscles, you'll actually have a better result and a better outcome. So you kind of got to unlearn this, this motor patterning that you've got here. So I'm going to talk to you from a perspective of motor patterning, all right, today. If there's anything you don't understand, stick your hand up, ask me. If there's any big words I use, I'm really sorry. It's because of, Motor yeah. pattern is the first big word you use. Yeah, big word is, no, no, no. Okay, so your movement, the way you move, is like how your muscles fire in a certain sequence. Right? So, or when you're doing a certain task, a certain muscle will fire. So, let's take it back to, so for example, when you're running. Running's a really basic thing. There's nothing really that can, there's nothing else to help you. There's no bike to prop your ass off the ground. You're not lying horizontal in the water and fighting because you're wearing a wetsuit. It's all up to you, okay? So when you're running, and you're running through the time and space, there's a certain phase through running where you're actually on one leg. That's what defines running as opposed to walking. They call it single leg phase, single leg stance phase. So this leg's propping me, my ass off the ground, right? Now the problem with that, if you look at me from the front, is there's nothing stopping this side from falling over essentially. Right? You're almost like cantilevering off this, this side down in here. Okay? So, your body's got to be able to hold itself nice and stable. Which is why, if stuff doesn't work real well, it'll do whatever it can to actually make it work. So, what it will do, in the best possible way, is switch on your glute stability muscles which hold you nice and stable across the front. Right? And everybody talks about doing core work and doing ab work. And everybody talks about doing, you know, strengthening your glutes and all that sort of stuff. I'm not talking about the big ones that give you your booty, you know, give you your ass or your ass implants or your six pack. I'm talking about little muscles that are just about functioning and allowing you to be stable and balanced. All right? But we're, I'm actually going to roll backwards first. Right? So first of all, you need to actually release. So if, often when you're a triathlete, you spend a lot of time like this in this closed position, right? where it's swimming, cycling, running, driving in the car, working on the computer, everything's all in this closed position. So often what actually occurs is this all gets really, really tight all the way through, and this gets a little bit weak. So some of your functional muscles get really weak. Okay, so this closed position. So in your spare time, as part of that 30 or 40 minutes that I'm asking you to donate to doing this little experiment that we're gonna do, I want you to spend some time just opening out and lying backwards. All right. Now, this is also a little bit of an infomercial because we're gonna be giving you um, we're going to be giving you some stuff to actually try to help your breathing as well down the back when you go out for your run this afternoon. But this also helps your breathing as well. It'll also help open up your diaphragm, your thoracic spine, all that sort of stuff. So in my little role as, a, as you heard in orthopedic sales and, and support and technical stuff, I see a lot of people that come in for back surgery. Right? I also treat a lot of people over in this other space with my rehab science stuff that have back problems to either make sure they don't get back surgery or to fix them up after they've got back surgery as well. So, biggest problem that we have as human beings at the moment, the biggest issue we have in modern society is the fact that we sit around and we sit on our asses all the time. So, first, we're moving, right? We're doing triathlons, we're doing that sort of stuff. But, so, part of that is also moving in an efficient way as well. So, we're talking, you're gonna talk about releasing. So, that's lying back and releasing that sort of stuff. 
doing certain stretches are going to help, right? And then we're going to actually refocus and switch on certain muscles that we need to switch on. And then we're going to move to the third part, which is strengthening and moving through a strengthening phase, doing a movement as well. Okay, so there's three parts to it. So release, reset, and then re-strengthen are the three things. So the three R's of rehab. There you go. Well, I just made that up. No, I didn't. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to actually show you a few things. I'm going to get you to try a few things. And you can actually, if you want to know more about it, give me a call, drop me an email. I can send you, we can send you in a little exercise a routine we're going to do. So, but the human body is quite an interesting structure, right? The parts that I'm going to talk about today and the parts that you're going to, I'm going to help you strengthen or do are to do with your spine, which holds it all your shit together. Then there's your pelvis, which kind of what the lower bit's attached to. Then there's your... Your upper girdle or your scapula and your shoulders, which is what your upper arms sort of hang off, right? So in triathlon, we got, we're going to use everything we've got, right? We're going to swim, we're going to ride, and we're going to run. But if we have a nice, strong, stable platform to do that with, we're going to be efficient, so we're going to use less energy doing it. We're going to be able to transfer more power, which means we can go faster doing what we're doing, and we're less likely to use the wrong stuff and less likely to get injured. So that's the whole principle of what we're talking about. So what I'm going to teach, show you how to do is the most, the strongest position for up, your upper body is what they call when you pack your shoulder blades or when you retract your shoulder blades. Now the biggest misnomer that a lot of people have is that when they swim, they're literally like a boat and they just go like that. And there's a paddles and they're paddling themselves along in the water. Okay? It's actually not how it works, right guys? So, when you swim, you literally attach your hand there and you pull yourself over that hand in the water. You've got to think of yourself like a ladder and you're pulling yourself up over a ladder. Now with that in mind, this is all connected all the way down. So what I'm going to talk about along this little conversation we're having now is about the interconnectedness of the body. So all the bits, the knee bone attaches to the hip bone and all that sort of stuff, right? It all, all attaches. So you've got to work out a way that you can get that attached and move across. Move your body over across. So it's about switching this on. So your core, holding nice and stable, nice strong stable spine, locking that shoulder blade in nice and strong and then being able to lift all your body weight essentially over that arm, right? So that's why it's really important to be able to set your scapula or your shoulder blade in a nice, nice strong stable platform. Now I can tell you now, if I went to say a different sport like AFL, have you seen all the guys in AFL with all the taping all the time? You see them all the time. All, lots and lots and lots of taping, lots of shoulder injuries, right? That's because a lot of their strength and conditioning regime is about making them strong muscularly. So the, all the old footy coaches used to be in the gym doing weights, right? And so what do they want to do, strengthen the most of? What do they spend the most of the time doing? Their biceps, right? Because you've got to have big guns wearing the jersey, right? Because it looks intimidating and then you can bump your opponent off. Right? It's, it's really, really important. Guns are important, guys, aren't they? Seriously. <coughs> The biggest problem with that is it makes you nice and strong, but it also turns you in like this. So it makes it nearly impossible to retract or put your shoulder blades in the right position, nice and packed. Right? You don't see them like this, do you? You don't see footy players like this. They're like this, right? Aren't they? They walk around. Right? Footy players. The biggest problem for them, and the reason why they get unstable shoulders and get shoulder injuries and get knocked all the time, is they aren't actually able to set their shoulder and scapula in the right position. The same for swimmers. If you don't come from a swimming background, the thing that sets good swimmers apart, or fantastic swimmers apart, from lesser swimmers, let's just call it lesser swimmers, because I was one of them, right, is being able to control your scapula and being able to set it in the right spot. If you can control it and you can actually lock it back in the right spot, you'll get a lot more power, you'll be able to switch on some really strong, powerful muscles and be able to propel yourself a bit better and you won't get injured, which is really, really important, which means you can swim more and get fitter and all that sort of stuff. The training principle keeps going. So that's for the upper part. We're going to talk about setting your scapula. We're going to talk about making nice strong spines and good balance. So we're going to have an exercise for that. And then we're going to talk about having pelvic stability or setting your hips nice and tight and being able to set in a nice stable platform as well. So if you are unable to do so and unable to when you're running, switch your your pelvic stability muscles on, like your little glutes that sit in on the side, so glute men, glute men, all that sort of stuff, right? Then what tends to happen so your body doesn't fall over is it switches on a muscle called the iliotibial band, and everyone gets have heard of ITB, ITB syndrome, right? It's a band of muscle that goes from here, runs all the way down, attaches to your knee, attaches to the head of your fibula, and can cause 
hip problems, knee problems, and ankle problems if it's too tight, right? So injury, 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 right? And also, get these really tight, tanging things that get really, really sore and tight. And if you guys are here at the moment and you're doing a few Ks, more than what you've had, I guarantee you guys have got really tight ITVs. Some of you, yes. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to talk about switching on some good muscles here and here, so we don't have to overuse these ITVs. Less problems with it as well.